the morning to you. Welcome everybody to our digital discovery show. My name is Despina Kratius. I am the proud GM slash Chief Navigator here at Tourism Tribe and Navi. And it is my pleasure to welcome you here today to the Digital Discovery Show, which is a show that is really all about digital transformation of our Australian small business communities uh, that is brought to you by Tourism Tribe and Navi Digital. And speak, speaking of supporting of small business community, communities around Australia, this episode is in honour of International Women's Day that is coming up on Monday, the 8th of March. And we wanted to invite a panel discussion here today. So it is our inaugural virtual Women's Day event. And I'm so excited to present to you some leading ladies that are real champions of small businesses in their regions, destinations, states, and also this, this wonderful country of ours. So we've had the pleasure, and I know with some of the women that you're about to meet, I've had the pleasure of working closely with for over some time now. And uh, what is definitely a glue that unites everyone that you'll meet today is that they're fiercely passionate advocates, advocates of, uh, of small business, of tourism, of destination placemaking. And uh, it's a pleasure for me to introduce to you one by one, we have the marvellous Michelle DeLava from Victoria Tourism Industry Council. We have sensational Serena Aldrich from Grampians Tourism. We also have superstar Susan Maynard from Connect Tourism. Welcome to you, Susan. We have the charismatic Karen Wallace from <laughs> Left Bank Design. And last but not least, we have, there's only one word for Fabi, and it's fabulous, Fabian Wintle. And she is our co-founder here at Tourism Tribe and Navi. Welcome to you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us on this live show today. Hello. Hi, so, Hi everyone. <laughs> we need to find a word for you because you've you found, you know, sensational Serena and fabulous Fabi. But everyone, what starts with D? Our darling Despina. We can find something better. Come oh, on. that's <laughs> nice. I am um, dynamic. Look, I, um, dynamic Despina. <laughs> dynamic Desi. I love it. So we are. Uh, we've titled this show about celebrating small business champion female leaders, and I want to commend you and acknowledge each and every one of you, because I see you as leading women and uh, certainly gotten to appreciate that in, in every one of you, in working with you on various programs, uh, particularly of late, um, which is fantastic. So I will let you, this you know, being a show about transformation and discovery in small business and growth, personally, professionally, I wanted to just go around the room to start with to tell us a little bit about your part of the world, where you are, and how you've been supporting businesses pre, during, coming out of COVID at the moment. So I'll start with you, Michelle. Um, just tell us a little bit about where where you're at the, at the moment. Yes. Hi, Despi. Hi, everyone. Hi. Happy Friday. Happy, Happy International Friday. Women's Day for Monday. Yes, um, and can I first say that I'm thrilled to be in this session with all these extraordinary women um, in the room. What a privilege. Thanks, Tourism Tribe, Navi, for inviting me. Um, also, i got to say, I love this hashtag Toast Your Challenge. I know you haven't said, but there was I was reading the document you sent last night, Despi, um, and I thought, that's it. You know, 2021 going to be the year that we choose to challenge. 2020 hit us in a way that no one ever expected. Um, and, you know, as we know, people and businesses fought to stay afloat, um, reacted so many to so many changes and uncertainties, but let's choose to challenge 
grow and thrive in 2021, guys. Come on. Um, oh, back yes, to your question. Yes, so, yes. Yeah, no, I was so energized last night. I was like, yes, I want to do something tomorrow now. It's 11 p.m. <laughs> let's challenge now. Um, so I'm Michelle and originally from South America with the 15-year passage through London before I got to Australia and call Australia home. Um, I've been with the Victorian Tourism Industry Council for two years now, but my previous role was also in industry development, designing programs to help um, upskill professionals in the industry and to support operators across Victoria to develop and grow their business. Um, we work with all sectors of industry, um, of the industry and all sizes of businesses, but mainly small businesses as they make up um, the, you know, the majority of um, the tourism industry. Probably one of the best jobs um, as I get to work with so many operators across this beautiful industry of ours. Um, and although last year was um, definitely a tough one, but I feel very grateful that I, I was still in this position where I could at least support businesses, even if it's just a little, just having a conversation and help um, them navigate through so much information that was coming out. And you've done a fantastic job. And just last week, we had Rob, one of the, uh, you know, a great VTIC friend that's gone through a recent Digital BizKeeper program that we've collaborated on together. And if you haven't had the chance to watch it, just go over onto our YouTube or Facebook channels. Just a great story of a, a business that started just pre-COVID and coming out thriving with all the support that you've been able to provide. So great work, Michelle and yeah. VTIC team. Thanks, T. That's awesome. So we'll move over to Serena. Um, hello, welcome to you. Hello. Tell us where you are. So for the, for everybody that's never heard potentially, I mean, I don't know if there's anyone still in the world that hasn't heard of yeah, the Great Yeah, I hope beer. not. <laughs> <laughs> but want to tell us a little bit about where you're from and how you've been supporting small business. Yeah, thanks, Despi. And echoing Michelle's sentiments too around being invited today, really um thrilled to be part of this so that's great thank you so much for the opportunity so um i work for grampians tourism so the beautiful grampians region is three hours west of melbourne um the centerpiece i guess of that region is the grampians national park um which is um one of uh i would arguably say one of victoria's most beautiful and accessible um national parks but the grampians region takes in um, as a whole, takes in a huge area, goes all the way up to Horsham, uh, takes in Hamilton down in the south, uh, takes in Ararat, and um, which is two hours west of Melbourne, and also takes in the northern Grampians region out to St Arnold, et cetera, which is where the start of the Silo Art Trail is. It's the southernmost um, Silo Art Trail piece that's been put in. So it covers a huge expanse. Huge. Um, my role is uh, the business manager for Grampians Tourism. So a big part of what I do in my day-to-day -day activity is actually going out and visiting operators. And it's one of the things that I love about it. Um, some people say to me, that's, that's not working. And I'm like, well, it is, but it just happens to be a lot of fun. In that I do do a lot of I do do a lot of time in the car, but it's out visiting people, going and seeing uh, operators at their business, and understanding what it is that they do and what they have on offer for people in the visitor economy. So, um, and then I take time to work with them on what are the product opportunities, what are the professional development opportunities for them, um, what are the grant programs that are available, and quite often it's just the little things and uh, what I've actually found is a lot of operators just love having someone come out to see them and say this is what I do this is what my business is about and and this is why I do what I do so I think that you know there's a lot of stuff that happens day to day but that is the a key part of the role that I really love um, and we have so many operators out there which I like to refer to as local secrets, but I guess my job is making sure they're not secrets anymore. So, <laughs> so yeah, so that's, um, yeah, that's my role, yeah. Love it. Well, we actually have one of your great businesses that you've uh, supported, um, Kayleen and, and Kayleen uh, and Matt, 
uh, next yes. week. So yeah, that that Fantastic. Yeah, this has all happened beautifully because they they're doing some great work. They've come out and grabbed all of the information and support by you know by the horns and doing some excellent work. So stay tuned for Kayleigh's yes. and, and that story. Thank you. Yep. So wonderful to have you here. Now Thank we'll work you. down from Sorry, we're a bit like the Brady Bunch in our sixth grid. <laughs> we'll look down now, um, or for me across. Susan, welcome. Thank Tell you. us where you're from. So you're we're going now up north to to you. Tell us where you're from and a little bit more about Connect Tourism and how you've been supporting small business all around yeah. your <laughs> Thanks, Despi, and again, echoing everybody else as well. You know, thank you very much for having me here today. It's been, it's an honour to be amongst some uh, amazing women today. So, and obviously in light for Monday's International Women's Day. But I'm actually based on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland. It's about an hour north of Brisbane, for those who don't happen to know where the Sunshine Coast is. And I've been lucky enough in my, I've been in the industry now for about 30 years and I've worked across many sectors, but probably the biggest ones for me were working with Tourism Events Queensland and then on to the RTO here in, in on the Sunshine Coast, Visit Sunshine Coast. And from that, I've been able to foster a lot of great relationships with businesses across Queensland and especially here on the Sunshine Coast. And then after that, moving into my own business, Connect Tourism, where I continue working with these businesses on the ground and helping them in their business. And I think from those previous relationships and after everything that went down last year, it gave me the ability just to pick up the phone and go, hi, how are you? Are you okay? Um, yes. And a lot of them really appreciated that, just the fact that someone out of the blue just rang them you know, not wanting anything from them other than the fact that, you know, how are you going? And, and yes. a lot of them were in a position, you know, as we all know, with tourism being hit so hard that um, they were, some of them were just lost and were just happy for someone to lean on and have a discussion and, you know, ask them if they were okay. And, you know, if I was able then to move that conversation on and to help them even further, um, you know, getting back on track and getting them, you know, back to where they needed to be, then that was my privilege. I absolutely loved that. And and I think and I hope that that was something that they actually appreciated just for somebody just to ring them out of the blue. Oh, 100%. I love it, Susan. I see that. Again, like I've known... Uh, working with you all individually, seeing that it's it's not just support from you know just ticking boxes. There's an there's deep um, uh, there's deep genuine care factor for uh, for people <laughs> outside of business, just caring for people and what they're going through, and uh, that level of connection um, to be to be reaching out like that, which I know everyone has has been doing, and I love that, Susan. Thank you. It's wonderful, and uh, yeah, um, to have you uh, on your first digital discovery. I'm sure, and something else that both Susan and Karen, who you're about to hear from, uh, have also been incredible coaches in a a, a, a significant statewide program in Queensland, where it involves daily group coaching sessions. So these two women have really joined the team. Uh, we kicked off on the 4th of January and we're still going till the end of March. So I just want to thank you both as well for all that amazing work that you've been you've been doing uh, with us for, on the Queensland Business Revival. So our charismatic, wonderful Karen, hello to yeah. you and uh, welcome to the show. Thank you for taking part. Tell us which part of the world you're at and how you've been helping a lot of small businesses decode their websites and uh, and to that extent uh, their search engine optim optimization. Yes, all the exciting stuff. So um, a big <laughs> hello from the Yarra Valley. So we're based an hour outside of um, Melbourne. And firstly, just thank you very much for uh, inviting me here to speak today. And it is wonderful, you know, to be here with these fantastic women too. Um, so, yeah, so back to the Yarra Valley. So Yarra Valley is famous for, a, it's a premier wine growing region. It's also a big uh, tourist destination. Uh, for Melbournians and for, for international travellers. So, of course, businesses here were really, you know, hard hit. Um, 
my company is Left Bank Design and, and we are a, a boutique um, web design and digital marketing uh, agency and we were founded on uh, helping small business. It's how we started out about, I don't know, about 12 years ago or so. Um, and so during the, the, the COVID period, um, we just had to help people pivot to e-commerce. That was the that, that was sort of our um, major effort during during COVID. Just looking at okay, what part of their business? You know, were they a restaurant that could start start uh, selling takeaway? Um, and just looking at you know, we had one very big tour operator here, and um, whose business was predominantly. Um, international and so we transformed their business into a uh, online grocery delivery service uh, throughout um, Victoria so yeah so look it's it's been it's been um, heartbreaking in one sense you know to see how um, hard some of the businesses were impacted but we've you know tried to help where we where we can and get these businesses up and running and then and now we're seeing you know businesses have, have got this extra revenue stream that they've put this hard work in over the the pandemic and um starting to to you know get back on track so very true through crisis we've seen a lot of great opportunities being seized yeah. Yeah. and exactly. innovation has been created um great work Great work. And welcome to finally Miss Fabian Wintle, who is our co-founder. And uh, do you want to share with us, for anybody that doesn't know which part of the world that you're beaming in from, dear Fabi? So I'm about five hours further north than Susan. So if you go from Brisbane and you keep on going towards Cairns, you will find Agnes Water slash 1770, which is the birthplace of Queensland. Um, where Captain Cook or Lieutenant James Cook arrived 251 years ago. Um, we had a big celebration that was cancelled due to COVID last year. I decided to move here around tra after travelling around Australia and my husband wanting to move closer to the beach with waves because it, we used to live in Brisbane but there was no waves. And my best friend lived here and I said, why not? You know, with our jobs, we can live anywhere. Um, so when I walk on the beach in the afternoon and I FaceTime Desi, she's like, how far is this from your house? I'm about four and a half hours. Yeah, yeah, so very, very lucky to have made that move five years ago. Um, and, yes, I'm talking to you from my kitchen table at the moment. I kind of move around the property um, <laughs> different ways of finding inspiration and it's just awesome to be able to talk to you ladies um, and, you know, know more about one another. I've already learned so much about everyone yeah. in the last five minutes. We're always talking to businesses and to operators, but Desi's wrote me in and given me the ability to actually <laughs> stop working on the computer and get the creative <laughs> mind going. <laughs> Um, which is wonderful. Oh, it's so. wonderful to have you. And something that reminded me in speaking with Rob last week, I love what you had said um, in in our, I think it was in the very first episode that we did together. And fabi has got this great, um, real great purpose for starting Tourism Tribe for allowing businesses to live off tourism. We exist to give them the capabilities through digital support and technology to keep propelling them to stay in business and live their best life running, delivering these experiences. Um, I love that, Fabi, and I saw it firsthand in what Rob, his story and what he shared, um, that he can have a lifestyle business um, in pursuing something he's passionate about. And that's that that reminded me of all your your great words of wisdom. Um, uh, when what we I first... preach. <laughs> Come and visit <laughs> anytime you I'll show you the sites, everyone. Absolutely. So I'm going to put in the focus now. We'll just have a little chat with Michelle. So I'll just pop pop our lovely ladies and they can have a little cup of uh, tea or, or have a little drink. So, Michelle, I wanted to just focus on and ask you three lockdowns. Your team, with Felicia and Chris and the team and yourself, I mean, in terms of a state tourism organisation and the work that you've had to 
do to put a lot of businesses on your shoulders. Tell us a little bit more of how you've seen this devastating impact of month long, a months plural, um, impact they've had on the tourism, hospitality and, and event sector. We should add in there that VTIC very much covers. Tell us some key initiatives and these innovations that you've seen because you've told me about some beauties of what, you know, when we talk about crisis and opportunity and really keep, keeping us focused on what is possible through your championing and your support. Could you sp speak a little bit to that and tell us, um, yeah, what, what you've observed about businesses uh, and what they've been able to, to really come out of this? Yeah, and you you you're right. Despi, like 2020 was indeed a year that you know we will never forget, and and definitely not for the tourism industry as well. It's been it's been very tough. And do you remember when we were talking about over tourism? It seems so long ago, doesn't it? Um, it, it was you know just two years ago. There was um, I started the research and and trying to explore a little bit more about over tourism. Now, obviously, we faced with a, a decline of eighty percent in international arrivals around the world. So it's it's even hard to believe that. Um, this is possible. But as you said, VTIC um, also um, had a very different year. So I guess our role remained the same. So advocacy, industry development, business support, but the environment that we, we were was um, were obviously very different. So all of the usual programs and events um, that we would normally run was cancelled our attention and focus completely shifted to supporting businesses during lockdowns, helping them to understand the restrictions and the requirements that were constantly changing. And there was such an overwhelming amount of information for businesses. Um, it was so hard to navigate through and which one do you trust? Um, and also we created um, new initiatives um, to just support and assist them to stay afloat. And um, you said before, or Despi, we had Rob, who was one of our um, big champions and part of the Digital Beeskeeper program that we ran in Victoria for 50 businesses. We had um, the tourism recovery consultations. We're now running still a program called the Business Think Tank to really help um, some operators relook at their model, their business models and, and um, explore new ideas. So there has been quite a few new programs that we ran, but we also had daily conversation with um, operators across the state during the during this time. Um, yeah, it's been massive impact um, in the industry. And we continue to see that, unfortunately. But I think we also, especially with the conversations that we had, we also had um, experience, we had the opportunity to, to experience the strength and the, the resilience that our industry and our operator has, which um, um, it's truly inspiring um, to have these conversations. And, you know, you've mentioned before, um, Despi, and there is this saying from um, Einstein, Albert Einstein, that I, uh, I heard um, in, in the middle of all of these, and I just thought it's so true um, that in the middle of every crisis um, lies great opportunity. Um, and we have seen many operators in Victoria embracing opportunity, uh, re-evaluating their business model, their offering, their systems, their processes. And sometimes we think of innovation as this um, being this massive beast, but it's actually, it, it, it starts with the small steps of improvement. And that's what we have seen um, a lot. Um, during this time for many of, of operators that embrace that opportunity and just try to do something, anything for their business just to stay afloat and survive. Um, given that it's, uh, you know, we're talking about digital, um, I think that maybe, you know, I could potentially list so many, but um, it might be a good one for um you know, to, to, for me to sort of highlight. Um, as we know, digital, the digital world obviously has transformed the tourism industry. Um, you know, how much we know about our, our customers and how much they know before they travel. And although some businesses have been performing really well in their digital path, 
a big percentage still says um, or, or said that they did not have the time, the money or the incentive um, to move into um, this digital world. So COVID um, has changed, um, I think, and um, has definitely accelerated the adoption of digital and technology in our industry. I think um, many, um, we've seen many businesses focusing and wanting to learn more to invest in digital. And I think what's been really great as well is that in search of these new opportunities in, in the digital space, many of the complexities and challenges around digital and technology were also demystified. Um, they're too hard, too expensive. I don't know where to start. Um, we have seen lots of virtual experiences, I'm sure all of us across the country. Um, but I, I have two beautiful examples um, with uh, 3D um, that maybe I'll share with you. So we had Melbourne River Cruises that produced the th uh, 3D video. So customers could experience a bit what, of what a cruise along the Yarra River would be and what you would see along the way. And um, it's obviously great. It was great during lockdown when no one could go anywhere, but it's also a great marketing tool for them now for their business. Um, it doesn't take away from the, the, you know, what the cruise or the, the, the actual experience is, but it just makes you wanna go and do it. Um, and it only took a day of shooting. Um, the, along the way, when the cruise, like the cruise pass um, by some of Melbourne's main attractions and landmarks, as we know. Um, Melbourne River Cruises also tagged these attractions and they included their website, which I thought it was so good. Um, you know, it wasn't just about their business. It was about the entire experience um, as if you were coming to their tour what you would see and just making that journey easy for them. If, you know, they, they see sea life, if they see Eureka Sky Deck, oh, I wanna know more. They could just click on their video and it's straight into their website. Um, so what a great way to support um, other operators. And also in the same area of the 3D, we had um, King, um, like six operators in King Valley they collaborated to create a 3D virtual tour of the Prosecco Road. Um, again, a great promotion for their businesses, but also for the destination. So it was just six operators, a mix of wineries, there was an accommodation, um, and it was just creating, you go and visit these um, different places along the Prosecco Road. And all of them have links to website or whatever you wanted to put, tell your story about your business. Um, so really, really good um, new initiatives and technology and small operators, um, especially um, around King Valley that, you know, before didn't think it was possible, but they were just looking for new opportunities. What can we, you know, during, uh, do during this time? And, and I think like we've heard of so many nice, like really good collaborations like this one between operators. I think as businesses adapted and created new products and experiences in the last year, they've also learned to seek collaboration with businesses um, that they haven't considered before. So we've seen um, potentially more willingness to support each other too, um, not only consumers. I think we've all heard about consumers wanting to support local businesses, but also businesses supporting other businesses. Um, and hopefully we'll continue to see these into the future, uh, a potential shift from me to we, so we can continue um, to move forward together and strengthen our industry. But like I said, I think I could list um, maybe quite a few initiatives in this space. Um, but maybe I'll just share another quick one that I thought it was so simple, um, but so special and not in the digital, but um, there is a small business owner that really took the time and opportunity during the lockdown to connect back with some previous customers um, and just check in how they were doing. She just like genuinely wanted to help and say, I'll just have a conversation. And, um, and she said she would, that her customers were so surprised um, and really appreciative of just getting that call or their or that email just with a personal message, how are you doing? Um, I think just, I thought it was so nice, such a simple gesture, uh, but that could 
definitely go a long way for her and for her business. Like who wouldn't want to go back to that business after, um, you know, a message like that. So I think we, we can underestimate um, what some small changes and initiatives could do to, to your business. 100%. Uh, like we've said, digital has been a big player in small businesses saying, okay, now it's time, all that stuff I've been putting off. But collaboration and just the human spirit, I mean, particularly after just watching Come From Away in Melbourne, the first my first city outing in over a year, um, just how everyone's come to back each other. Fantastic, Michelle. Thank you for sharing. I'm going to pop you back into the green room and uh, and have you come back. Uh, come back a little later on. I'm going to beam into Serena now. Serena, amazing wealth of experience in uh, what you do in many different roles over your journey. In your experience over the last little period, what have you identified as the difference that's made the difference in mindset and the way to be able to take action to create lasting change, to come through and thrive and seize those opportunities? What are some things that you've seen that the successful ones have in common? Yeah, um, thanks, Despi. Yeah, and look, some of it, it, absolutely, I'd say the two things would absolutely be, as you say, mindset and uh, innovation. And Michelle touched on that a little bit. So, um, and I don't think this is exclusive to COVID either. So um, in other roles that I've been in, in the visitor economy over the years, um, you know, we saw SARS, we saw um, collapse of airlines, we've seen all sorts of things come and go. Nothing quite as broad uh, as the impacts of COVID-19. But um, I preface this by saying I know it's been really tough for operators and closing their businesses is absolutely been rugged. So I don't want to downplay that at all. But the ones that seem to have fared the best and um, are recovering the quickest are the operators that I think have sat down and not only said, how are we going to survive this, but what what's the opportunity that we have right now? Because, um, you know, I think there, as tough as it is, there has been opportunity. Um, so those operators that seem to be doing really well, they've, they've either use the downtime to upgrade their facilities. And it doesn't have to be significant infrastructure projects. It might be as simple as having that time to get in there and repaint your accommodation rooms. It's really simple. Some of it's really simple stuff that Michelle was talking about. You know, it's all those incremental small things that go to making up a significant difference overall. You know, one of my favourite sayings is how we're going to eat the elephant. You know, you can only eat an elephant one bite at a time. You know, you just take a little bit each day and you start making those changes to your business. So they've used downtime to upgrade facilities. They've invested in new technologies, absolutely, you know, and we keep talking about digital given the given what we're talking about today, but digital has been a really key part of that. And more so than just, you know, it is about social media and Facebook, but it's about e-commerce. It's about operators that don't understand SEO. It's as simple as claiming your Google My Business listing. You know, I'm talking to operators where they go, oh, I've got Facebook, so I'm okay. And it's like, well, you need a little bit more than that. And especially now, that's I think COVID has highlighted um, the need for a broad range of digital technologies. Um, the ones, again, that are doing really well have identified new audiences or new target markets, you know. Um, particularly, I've got a handful of operators. Whilst international visitation to the Grampians is only a small percentage overall, um, there are some operators who rely really heavily on the inbound market. Um, and, you know, as soon as inbound tour operators stop making bookings, you know, 80% of their business is gone. The successful ones have turned that around and I've actually had one operator say to me, for the first time ever, we are seeing um, people from regional Victoria come and stay with us. Normally they would get them out of Melbourne, but they're getting people from Bendigo, they're getting people from Warrnambool, they're getting them from Geelong, So, which is fantastic to see that. So I think they're the ones that have done well. Um, others that have invested in professional development. So right back at the start of COVID-19, um, 
Grampians Tourism said, okay, we're going to use this time to talk to our operators, obviously. We we're sending out a hell of a lot of communication, a lot of stuff from VTIC around, you know, upgrading of um, the, these are the current restrictions. This is how you can continue to run your business. But um, we sent out a survey saying, what has this highlighted for you that you are lacking in terms of professional development that you need for us as a regional tourism body to deliver? Uh, and the number one thing over and over again, yes, there was marketing, but digital marketing. And as I say, it was SEO, it was search engine marketing. It was more than just, um, far more than just how to set up a Facebook page, how to create engaging content, um, reputation management. It was all of those things, which is um, some of the work that we've done with yourselves with Tourism Tribe. And, and like we say, you'll hear from Matt and Kayleen next week. So it's those people that have grasped the opportunity available and they're the ones that have gone, we're going to take this, we're going to run with it. And they're the ones that are emerging as the leaders in our industry and in our region currently. Um, I think, as I mentioned before, a big part of my day today is visiting operators, learning about the product, you know, working with them to say, okay, what are we, what are we going to do to take your business to the next level? Um, and my fear, my experience is I can tell you within a matter of minutes of arriving at their business or their location, I can pick which are the operators that are going to do more than just survive. I, I can tell by the attitude, by the way they um, have engaged, have used this time, who's really going to thrive, who's going to still be there. And that's fantastic because we need a broad you know, range of um, product for the region, for visitors to the region. But you could absolutely pick who are the ones that are going to absolutely thrive through this and emerge as the leaders for the industry in the region, which is what we need. We need poster children, so that's great. Oh, that's what I love about what you've shared uh, for mm. any any business that's that's tuning in or watching the recording it's mm. it's also about just taking that opportunity to lead taking it on mm. taking action and um yeah i mean who doesn't like to be a poster child for any region or any um comes with great benefits so you mm. see and the universe rewards that you see someone yeah. co our coach Claire that worked with Kayleen and Michael she was so proud to see them like take on board after a one-on-one -on -one coaching session and she's like you should see this video that they created you know because they yeah. went into kind of let's explore video content for your yeah. business so um yeah. I, I think you're right on there there's a great opportunity to to lead uh in that way yep. thank you sensational thank you. Serena thank you very much <laughs> I'm going thank you. to Beam in our uh, dear Susan. Hello to you, Susan. Uh, there we go. Yay. Um, uh, welcome to you. Uh, so you've been working daily with our Queensland Business Revival Program. You've been doing a few sessions uh, every week. So you have you have now seen a trend in some challenges of what's challenging businesses. Can you highlight a few of those challenges? And I think a lot of our audiences will relate. And what we've done with these sessions is that we always leave a little bit of homework. There's no learning without action, right? So That's what right. have been what are some of the challenges and some of the choose, how have you chosen to challenge them in overcoming them? Could you share a little bit about that with us? Yeah, it's been it's been a, a great experience, actually, because it's been a broad range of product and it's been outside many outside of the tourism realm as well, which is good for me um, to understand and, and get to know a lot of businesses outside of tourism. But the one thing that I noticed um, over the last few weeks in doing these sessions is how many people or how many businesses actually were not involved in digital and how many were actually starting from the bare bones. And these daily sessions that we've been having, a uh, lot of the feedback and the questions we're getting is, we just want more. We just want more because I have no idea where to go next or I have, I don't understand how this works for my business and what we can potentially do for my business. And that was quite surprising for me, how many people were not in this space already. 
And then on the flip side of that, there was a, a number of people as well who are in this space but going, I'm lost, I don't know where to go, I don't know how to get this to work for my business. And I found that these daily sessions for both of those different um, aspects of people's knowledge have been great because we've got different levels. So we do Facebook for beginners, we do Facebook intermediate, we do the websites, which Karen will talk to you about. We've got, you know, even these tools, knowing what tools to use for your business that will make their lives more um, time, time management is a big one for them because a lot of them wear multiple hats. So they do, again, they just don't know which way to turn. So the sessions have been really good in that respect to be able to give them um, little tidbits of information. And if they want more, they can go and find more and or they can ask questions and we can delve a little bit deeper. And then on the back of those sessions, as Despi was saying, at the end of them, we go, right, now, you know this little bit of information now, what are you going to do? So we set these little small tasks and they're not huge, so they're, they're easily achievable, but it gives them something to look forward to and to be able to create for their business and potentially use. And then we tell them, you know, tag us and let us know what you're doing so we can see and give you feedback and, and help you through the process if you get stuck or anything like that. So, you know, just these little tiny little activities, I think, help tremendously because it not only gives them a little bit more confidence in using whatever it is that they're what they're actually trying to do but it actually works for their business as well and they can implement that into their business so you know the challenges that they've had you know over the past 18 months have been extraordinary and and some of the things that I've noticed a lot too is that these sessions are daily as we know but the number of people who come back every day so they're hungry for the information even more so so that it, to me is just astounding the fact that they're taking an hour out of their day every day and to join us on these sessions is just is amazing that they're doing that because they can see that they need this information to help their business get through this and to help them to continue to grow and develop new product or services whatever the case may be so it's just been it's been tremendous to watch these businesses grow from day one all the way through and i can't wait to see at the end of the program, to see the results of some of these businesses and what they've been able to achieve and just the and the confidence we've been able to give them in knowing that you don't have to know it all. <laughs> you know, take the bits and pieces that you know for your business fit well and be confident in those smaller chunks that we're providing and then take those away. And, and then maybe long-term plans, introduce the other things that we've spoken about. But and I think that's another big one is people go, well, everyone's telling me I have to do this, 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 and this. And I'm going, no, don't have to do it all. <laughs> and I think that's the part that people need to realise your business doesn't or you don't have to do it all. You've got support, but you can do one thing at a time. Do them well as you go. And then that way you'll be so confident that, yes, you will be able to move forward to the next bits. So that's some of the things that I've noticed a lot um, over these last few weeks with people and how they are trying to get their business back into a normal, a normalcy, I suppose, is for want of a better word. Oh, and I've just popped up on the screen just to give our audience a bit of context. This is 2,000 small businesses from around Queensland. Uh, it was oversubscribed and the, the, the program is now full and we're taking wait lists. But this was a program that involved a whole lot of education, but then these daily group coaching sessions where there's a there's a teach segment and these are the, the, the topics that were covered that Su, uh, Susan is referencing. And um, you're right, there is daily, ta you know, businesses coming daily. It has been an incredible uh, amount of, um, yeah, I guess it, it has been, it's given us, um, it's, it's been in, empowering that all the work that we're doing collectively to support businesses is what is needed. And uh, we keep asking those questions and doing the same thing. And there's a lot more um, support coming out coming over your your way to um, for anyone that's listening and wanting to know some more information uh, that we'll be able to share with you. Keep up the great work. You're not on today, are you? No, back on next no, week. No. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. 
Um, well, thank you so much. I'll I'll pop you back in, and uh, and we'll just have uh, Karen on now to come and join us. Hello, Karen. Our wonderful SEO and website um, specialist coach. What have been some of the non-negotiables? So you've had a similar experience like uh, like Susan, where you've seen a lot of you've you've been in front of a lot of businesses and feeling a lot of their fielding questions because that's something with these group coaching sessions it's not just doing a presentation they're sending their challenges or questions or things that they want to focus on and there's a lot of group discussion what uh i guess the question for you is what are some of your non-negotiables that you can share with businesses in terms of choosing to challenge them around website or SEO? What are some top three non-negotiables that um, they could take away? Mm. I'll, I'll, I'll dive into that, but I just wanted to um, uh, confirm what um, was said before about I'm, I'm finding people are um, there's a lot of information and people are feeling somewhat overwhelmed and um, I think yes that step-by-step -step approach to what people are learning and implementing um, that goes a long way uh, to, you know to um to just you know, take that step-by-step -step approach but as far as non-negotiables uh, with um, web design and obviously, um, SEO uh, feeding into that. So my top three non-negotiables. Number one is planning. So if you're starting a new uh, website or doing a, a refresh, is to get into plan. Is to do um, planning, and that's in three stages that I like to do it. So number one is doing your keyword research. It's really important, and that's what I'm noticing is. You know, a lot of people find it overwhelming. It's the sort of, you know, boring bit of of um, marketing, but it's invaluable. It sets the foundation, you know, for for your marketing. So, getting in before you do your your web design, uh, a new site or a refresh, get that keyword research done. Um, and then I like to get people to do competitor research. So, look at who your competitors are. Um, what are they doing well? What are they not doing well? What could you learn? Um, is there extra functionality that you might like to add to your website? Um, look at, you know, what are, what are they saying? You know, what copy are they um, using? What In what style? And so on. Um, and then what I also like to do is design. And I think this is really useful if you're a Have a look, and not necessarily uh, just in your industry, but have a look um, in overseas. You know, have a look in uh, if you're a, a, a winery. Uh, have a look in the Napa Valley. See what other businesses are doing outside your industry. We tend to get stuck at just looking at our direct competitors, but have a look um, at, at at what's going on outside your industry, and then put a list together of what you like. This helps you give creative direction to your web designer, and it will really aid the communication with between you and your web designer. Excellent. So taking that leading role to share with you exactly and for you to get into their um, into their brain almost to be able to unpack that. Yes. So that was, do I have time for two more? Just, uh, just, Ken, I was getting a little bit worried because you were dropping out a little bit. I thought I may have lost you for a second there. Ah, so okay. we could share it. But yeah, you can quickly go through a couple more. Well, just two, just two, um, two quick points one yeah. is is images for your website uh, images are an investment in your business and to have strong stunning images um, that that goes a long way for you know driving your product sales or your services sales so that's number one number two copywriting this is the biggest challenge uh, people have with uh, getting one of the biggest with getting their website up and running and it's always where the delays occur about 80% of the time if you can't afford a copywriter 
what I recommend is doing a brain dump um, and getting all your thoughts down and then getting a copywriter to do some editing. So there you can, instead of getting them to do the whole project, that uh, you can get them to really go through and um, create copy that is suitable for uh, for a website and, and following uh, best practices there. So they would be my, my uh, non-negotiables when you're for your, your new web project or a web refresh. Excellent. Top tips. Plan, look around, do some competitor benchmarking, really good quality images, never take for granted, you know, never get a second chance to make a good first impression and uh, look at your copy to, to complement the images. That's an excellent advice there. Thank you, dear Karen. And I'm just now going to beam in Fabi, uh, Fabi over here. Hello, Fabi. Uh, so just to finish up on some good gold nuggets uh, to help everyone in the Choose to Challenge. Now, you, the way you have taken on board not just digital but using technology and automation within the business, uh, working now, what, seven, eight months? It feels like a lot longer. It feels like years. But like we've always been together. But the way we've been able to really implement, embrace and implement automation in the business, it's really catapulted us and been able to scale and, more importantly, help more people and work with more leading champions like the girls you've seen today. And that's all because of, you know, I guess the, the technology that we've been using and working remotely from all different parts of the country. So what would be some of your advice and some tools some tools that you could share that have changed the way that we roll, and uh, that's literally we call our ops manuals how we roll, um, and how others could potentially roll as well. Could you talk to that a little bit and share some of that, you know, some of the magic that has really been able to help our business become smarter in what we do? Fabi, you're just on mute there. You're just on mute. There you go. You can tell Start again. There we go. That's better. Take two. <laughs> I, I was really Fabi. prepared in case I was buzzing when I was in the green room. Yeah, no, what I wanted no, to no, say to us now, now that you can hear me is that if you think smart automation tools don't apply to your business, think again because they will. You, If you're running a small business, a medium or a large business, um, you just look at your customer. You look at all the information that is out there. You look at all the different ways we need to market a business. Unless you have twins or triplets of you, you're going to need to find a way to spread yourself. And the best way to spread yourself is to use automation tools for your business. There is no way we would be able to deliver all the programs that we're working on at the moment without having implemented all that automation. When I talk automation, and it was quite, it was great listening to Karen before, you know, talking about web development tips, and not once has she talked about coding a website. It was all about smart business practices, select great images, select content. But some of you listening to us might be thinking, oh, I don't have the skills to do that. If you understand business and you, are, you have the skills, um, the tools that are available now are really easy to use. So if you feel that you're doing something twice, it could be such a simple thing as, you know, downloading an attachment in your email every time or you see you're doing something more than once during the day, there is a, and if it's on a computer, <laughs> there is a way to automate that. And you need to teach yourself or attend some of our training to learn about these tools. The most simple one is Zapier. That's, that's you know, we've been using it for years, but now it's getting really popular because there's too many things to do. Zapier is the glue that holds all your different pieces of software together. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, in the tourism industry, an operator that I know works on an island and their booking system obviously reminds people that they need to book, book the boat trip to go to the island, but what's happening is their booking system user friendliness is not good enough to remind them that it's not one way that they have to book. They have to book 
the return as well. So what happens to this business is they have a lot of people that think they are leaving, but they hadn't actually booked the trip to go back and they can't go back to land. So we set up an automation with Zapier so that every time there's a booking that comes in uh, and, and is only a one way, an email automatically gets sent to the client to remind them that they've forgotten to book their return trip. If we didn't have that, that would be the role of someone to be on the phone for two, three hours a day. How much did that cost to build? maybe 20 minutes, or if you do it with an expert, it'll be five minutes after you've created your account. It will mostly be free unless you want to be on the paid plan of Zapier that might cost you 20 bucks a month, but you've taken away a huge problem. So what you need to understand yourself as a business owner, if you don't want to pay consultants to, to get you there, is be aware of what systems exist online now to run a better business. You know, they might not be super fancy. Uh, they might not get you more bums on bed, but they'll certainly take away the pain of doing everything else you need to do to run the business and leave you more time for marketing and putting bums on seats. Are you still here, Desi? What other tools shall I be talking um, yeah, about? Look, uh, look, we're just running a little bit low on time, but I love what you've said. I mean, Zapier is a big one. Like you said, it's cost effective, mm. and I love what you've shared. Yeah, there's oh, overwhelming. Quick one to mention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. had an example with a business yesterday. You need to have a Dropbox folder or whatever system you use with all your logos, all your colors, all your insurance policies, everything that you need to have, have it nicely organized because when there is an opportunity to do an ad somewhere and you realize that you haven't got the right photo and the right size or the logo in a transparent background, you're not going to do it. So do some back office cleaning and organize all your digital assets in a folder. Oh, and there's nothing better, right? That feeling when you organise your digital stuff and folders and nicely, it's it's the, the best. So Thank you, Fabi. No digital skills, business skills. Business skill. And I think that's the really important one to, sorry, I took you away there. Um, that's the really important one to know that digital is not just all about the sexy Facebook and Instagram and the marketing. Mm -hmm. It's internal efficiencies that will help you save our most precious commodity our time um, uh, and then we're able to free ourselves up to do more things that we love I have some <laughs> look at this we've got Joe Pincus we love Joe from uh, she heads up the Victorian Tassie branch Hi, Despi, she was saying, really looking forward to today's session and absolutely we do have a lineup of champs. Thank you for joining us, Joe. Our lovely Polly Gibson, thank you. Love it. Choose to challenge. Um, our girl Hannah, she's just is saying so true to you. Susan, she loved everything that you've had to share about taking things in small steps and not um, and eliminating that overwhelm. And uh, thank you, Julie, for joining us. Uh, she's saying some golden insights here. Um, it's wonderful. And if anyone else has got any questions uh, while we start wrapping up, please send them in the comments. So quickly, I'm going to go around the room now, starting with Karen. What is your, your what will you choose to challenge within yourself and and for others in others uh, around Despina, I think you already know this one of me is uh, you know, it's <laughs> allowing you to push me out of my comfort zone. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to make me do now? <laughs> exactly. Oh, God. Yeah, so that's uh, and um, yeah, so Despina is always pushing me out of my comfort zone, and I really appreciate it. I mightn't at the time, but afterwards I do. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and and then you know for, for small businesses it's the same thing you you we get this um, feeling of I can't do it or I'm I'm scared you know you can do it There's, you'd be so surprised you know the, the the pandemic has shown us that we really uh, you know what we can do when we need to and and to push ourselves and to just you know to embrace digital and even if it's as Susan said you know one one step at a time uh, just embrace it and push yourself out of that comfort zone 
Love it. That's where the magic is, all the growth outside of our comfort yeah. zone. Serena, my matching name sister, Serena, yeah. what is your, uh, <laughs> what's your choose to challenge? Uh, I think it's one that um, uh, applies for small business as well as me personally and, and people who know me well would say this would be the case, sometimes irritatingly, but I always I choose to challenge the status quo. It, nothing irritates me more than someone saying, oh, but we've always done it that way. That is just a red rag to a bull. And I'm like, well, why? Why? That's just, and it drives people crazy. But, but I think it's the same for business. You know, if you're just doing something because you've always done it that way, look, you may come full circle and say, yes, that's absolutely the way that we should do it. Great. But I would guess that if you got right down into it and you tipped everything out and started again, you'd probably do things differently. So that's oh, mine. So blind blind acceptance just drives the me status crazy. Quo. Yep. I love it. Well, look, everyone's going like this to you. <laughs> not, not in this room, not on this stream. Um, <laughs> Michelle, what's your choose to challenge? I'll, 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 I think I'll do one for the industry. So I will choose to challenge that we don't just do recovery. Let's choose to challenge for a better and stronger future of the tourism mm -hmm. industry and businesses. So for what 2021 and beyond brings us, let's not just recover, let's just build, rebuild something strong and better. Ooh, yes. Amen, sister. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> um, so good. Choose to challenge rebuilding better, stronger industry. So good. There's, so, there's a blog out of this, right? This is, um, yeah, I'm just like, we've got to do more with this. Love it. Susan, what's yours? So all those are great, and I'm going to pick one of those as well. But I think at, also at the end of the day, we need to choose to challenge me. So find the time to look after yourself um because mm. without you there's nothing else that's going to work so we need mm. to take time out and i've actually realized this for myself very recently that i need to take that time for me um so i choose that challenge for myself and i hope i stick to it <laughs> Oh, that is such an important, important one. It's the old uh, put the put the face mask and the you know the oxygen on yourself first before you put it on any everyone else. Really good one. Really good one. Thank you. And Fabi, what's your what do you choose to challenge? I would say challenge yourself to use high tech to be high touch. Otherwise, you're not going to have enough time for yourself with everything us women yes. have to do in a day yeah. on top of work being creative coming up with awesome solutions for our clients keeping our business going um so smart enough technologically so you can have more time with you your clients or do whatever you like oh i love it and mine to contribute mine uh, we we did some work around this the other day and what came to me was choose to challenge the imposter syndrome so when we're getting our overwhelmed or when we think this isn't for me why do you know i was just say who says who says you can't and act as if you can. So, what if you're a business that can do digital? What if you're a what if you're a professional that can go after that grant? You know, like so. Let's choose to challenge the imposter. We're going to wrap things up. Thank you for hanging around. I think it was well worth um, uh, staying a bit longer with us. Thank you to everybody who has joined us and commented on the stream. Keep the comments coming if you're watching the replay. Thank you, dear Karen. Thank you, Serena. Thank you, Fabi. Thank you, Susan. And thank you, dear Michelle. Um, uh, this was um, this was a great way to start our inaugural uh, Women's Day special feature. And uh, so with that said, I uh, will say goodbye to our wonderful ladies and I will say goodbye to you, our audience. If you have been inspired to get your digital discovery on, we do have a business digital, a digital business keeper course coming that will be open up to everybody. Um, and starting on the 20th of April, everybody is welcome to join the program and you'll find more information on tourismtribe.com.
com and I'll pop the link into the comments uh, when we wrap up as well if you want to know some more information. We've got some information sessions also coming up if you want to know a little bit more about that. Otherwise, choose to challenge yourselves, choose to challenge your businesses and choose to keep choosing to challenge each other. Thank you, everybody, and see you next week. Same time, same place with our special guests from the Grampians, Matt and Kayleen. Until next time, uh, here's to your digital journey. Bye for now.